Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got quite a lot of stuff to go over for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet raid updates. We've got some new Nintendo announcements to take a look at, some DLC small updates. We've got a lot of stuff to break down, so if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, of course, Inteleon raids are now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. They went up today. This was Cerebi tweeting out, saying, Cerebi update, the latest Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Terror Raid battle event is now live. Ice Terror type Inteleon is in seven star Terror Raid battles until Sunday, the 30th of April at 2359 UTC. So, of course, it is uh, this weekend and then it is next weekend as well. And hopefully, at the end of next weekend, we then find out the next seven star Terror Raid, which again is most likely going to be one of the Gen 6 or Gen 8 starters that has not been featured yet. Um, we also have a pretty decent kind of combat strategy for the Inteleon as well. This was posted by Light. Uh, saying best option to defeat Inteleon 7 star raid. I've not done it yet. I don't know how difficult it is. It, it doesn't feel like it'd be that difficult, but again, I've not done it yet. Uh, so Copper Jar apparently is a really, really good Pokemon to use with the clear amulet. You want the heavy metal ability, um, the shiny. I don't know why that's in there. It doesn't matter if it's shiny. Obviously, it's not stronger. Terra type is steel. And then the EVs, 252 attack and 252 uh, special defense. And then probably just like four in HP or six in HP, whatever it is. Adamant Nature, Heavy Slam, stands, uh, Sandstorm. So this is the strat. So basically just use Sandstorm to counter the Snowscape and then spam Heavy Slam until you can Terrestrialize and finish him. Enjoy. So again, apparently that's a pretty easy way to do it. As I say, I've not done it myself, so I'm not sure how difficult it is. But uh, if you are struggling and you don't really know what kind of strategy to use, that's a decent one there that was posted by Light. Uh, moving on, we have new animation updates for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. This is really, really exciting because it's basically confirming that the Switch 2 is pretty close. If you didn't see the video that we did a few days ago, the, basically that they've kind of remade every single uh, model in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, and they've made it with 60 FPS. So uh, the, there's now 60 frames per second, which obviously isn't available on the Switch. But obviously on the Switch 2, it will be available. Why would they go out and make all Pokemon have 60 FPS animations for the Switch, which it can't use? Obviously, it's for the Switch 2. The Switch 2 is going to have 60 FPS, which is why all the Pokemon are being kind of updated and upgraded with their uh, frames per second, just so it will be able to run a lot smoother on the new Switch console. Again, we don't know when the Switch console is going to be coming out. Apparently, it's going to get announced this year. Apparently, it could even be coming out this year. And maybe Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is going to be uh, getting an update patch. That's what the leaker said. They said that it's going to be getting like an update patch for the new Switch when the second DLC drops. So when the uh, Indigo Disc drops, apparently... All of these like frames per like 60 FPS animations are also going to get like implemented into the game for the next Nintendo console. Don't know how true that is. Again, the leaker also said about like terraforms and stuff, so obviously they do know a little bit. But either way, this is uh, the information that we have. So this was Soul Silver Art tweeting out saying, "Oh, I totally missed that part three of this interview came out. Uh, this is the link. To be honest, there's some fascinating information. Creatures is definitely one of the best parts of Pokemon development." I also had to share these clips because I love all three of these mons so much. Iron Thorns is so epic and Walking Wake. Uh, Spidox is the best Spidox. I'm not a fan of Spidox at all. I think it's my it's my least favorite Generation 9 Pokemon. But these are the animations. So as you can see, very, very fluid with the movements and stuff and with the attacks. This would be really, really cool for Pokemon Stadium if all of these Pokemon are now being like updated. A Pokemon Stadium 3 doesn't sound so far-fetched because obviously all of these Pokemon animations now 60 FPS. This is Spidox here just kind of like, well, I guess walking like a spider. And then we also have uh, one of the legendary Quartra as well. Just looks really, really smooth. We have this as well, which is from the actual... Um, interview we've got some more animations here this is glaceon just walking normally so as you can see super fluid like really really fluid movements this is glaceon swimming obviously there's no water but uh, the evolutions can swim in pokemon scarlet and violet and then we also have um this uh, pokemon i can't remember its name for the life of me oh my god it's really annoying one of the titan pokemon just walking normally bombardier that's the one uh, and then we have it flying here as well so as you can see just really really um just fluid movements like it just looks really really good and then they just kind of go over different kind of aspects of um 
animate like the animation and and how they kind of create these 3d assets and the uh, the models and stuff they say it's hard hard work we've got some images here obviously these aren't animations but these are just kind of like images i guess looking a little bit better um but uh, yeah that's another kind of um interview that they just went over there's like a part there's a, it's a three-part interview where they show different animations and stuff like i say we covered it recently but these are some more animations that have just come out but uh yeah i don't know really really exciting this definitely paves the way open for the switch 2 again we don't know when it's going to come out um but uh, yeah apparently the 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 pokemon scarlet and violet games are going to be getting an update for the switch 2 when uh the uh, the indigo disc drops apparently that's what the leaker says we'll have to wait and see uh moving on we have some new uh tcg stuff to take a look at this is just posted by Macchio and jay roses for the 151 set uh, some really really good artwork here so venusaur ex charizard ex and blastoise ex and other cards revealed for Pokemon 151, the Japanese set. So here is the complete evolutionary line of Bulbasaur. So this is just some of the artwork and stuff. It's got Bulbasaur there, Ivysaur there. Venusaur there looks really, really cool. The Charizard one looks sick, man. We've got Charmander here, Charmeleon here, and then we have Charizard. These EX cards, mm, beautiful. They're also keeping the silver borders as well, it seems. Uh, and then we also have Squirtle here. We have Wartortle here. And then Blastoise EX card. And then, um, yeah, so it's, it's really cool artwork there for the new upcoming set. I don't know if they... I'm hoping that this, this drops worldwide because I really want to collect this set because it's just the original 151. I think it's going to be a really cool set to collect. Uh, moving on, though, we have this update here from Nintendo themselves. So this is quite interesting. This is pretty exciting. Nintendo have confirmed for Gamescom uh, 2023. Uh, they will be there this year. It's between the 23rd and 27th of August. Let's see what uh, Nintendo everything has to say about it. So for the first time in four years, of course, COVID had a, a part to play in that. But either way, the first time in four years, Nintendo will be returning to Gamescom for the Expo's 2023 show. The news was shared in a brief statement posted on the official Twitter account. The message reads, we are excited to announce that Nintendo will be exhibiting at Gamescom 2023. Many more exhibitors will follow in the coming weeks. Stay tuned. Then they go on to say, in previous years, Nintendo had a fairly sizable presence at Gamescom. However, over the past few years, the company skipped the show, including in 2022 when there was a full-on in-person event. Specifics regarding Nintendo's presence at Gamescom 2023 have yet to be shared, so fans can only speculate as to what the company's involvement will be. That being said, Nintendo will almost certainly have playable games on the show floor. I don't know if this really has any kind of correlation with Pokemon. I don't think they would drop a demo for Scarlet and Violet's DLC um, at this location at Gamescom. With the date that it's coming out as well, the 23rd to 27th of August, I'd like to believe that we'll have one DLC by then. I'd like to believe the Teal Mask is out by then. Like, the Teal Mask is stated for fall 2023, but again, that is just a placeholder. It could easily come out in August or July or whatever. Um, I don't think, just because it says fall, that it's definitely got to come out in fall. Like, obviously, with the Crown Tundra, that had a placeholder date of winter, and then that came out in October, which is autumn. So, just because it does have a placeholder doesn't mean that it can't come out earlier. So, hopefully, we do have it by then. So, if it is out, they may just do a demo of it if it's, like, already out. But maybe they also show some stuff about the Indigo Disc. You never know. It is Nintendo, though, as a whole. It's not Pokemon themselves. So, it could show stuff on, like... To, um, the, the new Zelda game and stuff even though it'll be out by then and maybe other games that are kind of on the way like maybe Pikmin 4 or something uh, there have also been times when Nintendo has shared important news about previously announced Switch games. So again, this this is why it could also have potentially something to do with Pokemon as well. That that doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen again this year. Either way, the fact that Nintendo is back is a pretty big deal. Gamescom 2023 will take place between August the 23rd and August the 27th um, at the uh, the Kolnames in uh, Germany. We'll keep you updated as we learn more about Nintendo plans for the show. So yeah. Pretty exciting, cool stuff there. Um, again, don't know if it's going to show anything Pokemon, but uh, hopefully there will be like demos and stuff if you're in Germany. If you are in Germany around that time, um, uh, yeah, you may as well check it out. I mean, Gamescom is a massive event. Interesting, they're not going to E3, but they're doing Gamescom. I mean, E3, I don't know why, but yeah, it's just kind of crashed and burned this year. Like, literally been cancelled, but. Nintendo are all for Gamescom, so very, very interesting. And then finishing things off, I wanted to go over this little leak update here. Uh, this was posted by Kuro Blitz 96 and I think they made a really, really cool um, kind of connection between Riddler Koo's really old tweet and something that we've obviously just seen. So, Riddler Koo originally on the 8th of November 
uh, posted, do you think that the Cap Pikachu would get a new member? This was before Pokemon Scarlet and Violet dropped. So he said, do you think Cap Pikachu would get a new member? Do you think that Vivian would get the 21st pattern? Do you think more Go exclusive and Scarlet and Violet compatible forms exist? We got so many questions unanswered. And potentially that Cap Pikachu that he's talking about is the new Captain Pikachu. And so he could be talking about, you know, do you think, because I think this is round when it was like all getting leaked and stuff. And he's saying, do you think more Go exclusive and Scarlet and Violet compatible mons exist? Well, the Go exclusive mons, obviously, um, we'll be talking about, uh, oh my god, what's it? Uh, Goldengo's pre-evolution. Uh, obviously, we have the roaming form and then we have the normal form. And potentially, the roaming form could be shiny in uh, Pokemon Go if that event ever happens. But maybe there might be another mythical that they drop in Pokemon Go, which is exclusive. Obviously, with Meltan and Melmetal, they were Go exclusive. And uh, they were obviously new mythical Pokemon. So potentially the new mythical Pokemon could be through Pokemon Go again. Um, and if that's the case, then obviously people will all be jumping back on Pokemon Go. Even though I think a lot of people are like boycotting it at the moment. I'm not really sure. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on with Pokemon Go right now. But uh, yeah, they could easily distribute a new mythical Pokemon through Pokemon Go. And uh, yeah, Scarlet and Violet compatible forms exist as well. So yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But uh, I thought it was quite interesting there that... Uh, if this is the Cat Pikachu that obviously was dropped quite a bit later after the Scarlet and Violet games came out. Um, yeah, he could also be talking about like new mythicals or something that are exclusive for Go. Anyway, though, that's going to be everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. That's everything from me. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.